about midway through the conference season. We have a big game at home tonight. Welcome to Countdown to Tip-Off here on O-State TV. I'm Brian Troll and this is Luke Garza. I'm Richard Denson with Natalie Sutton. And Brian, tonight's game against TCU might just seem like another Big 12 matchup, but this game could do big things for both teams down the road. They each have a similar record right now and they're both 3-5 and five in conference play. So each team, which has lost two of their past three games, has a chance to right the ship here. So let's take a look at some stats that could kind of drive this game. The point discrepancy is huge. TCU is in the top seven, or top six I should say, averaging 87 points per game, while the Cowboys are 80th, averaging only 78.2. Now let's look at the turnovers forced, where the Cowboys rank 64th in the nation, forcing just over 15 turnovers per game. Now the Horned Frogs trail a bit in that category, they're all the way down at 217th, but it's going to be hard to make them turn the ball over because they have one of the best five assist to turnover ratios in the country. For every turnover they get, they have 1.6 assists. So that's going to be a little bit easier because Jalen Fisher is out with a torn meniscus. He's their best ball handler and their best free throw shooter, shooting just over 84%. He's also great shooting from deep, shooting about 44% from beyond the arc. Yeah, that'll be huge for the Cowboys. Yeah, look, looking back at tonight's game, like they have to be happy to get back at home. In fact, let's take a look at the last time out. They were on the road in Fayetteville for the Arkansas game. And yeah, so yeah, they were on the road in, in Fayetteville for the Arkansas game as part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. And Arkansas was looking to try to redeem themselves because I know we blew them out last year. So Arkansas had that bad taste in their mouth. I think it was one of their worst home losses. And we were actually coming into the game having won 11 of our last 12 meetings at Arkansas, but nevertheless, you got to kind of throw records out of the uh, book when you come to a matchup like this. I mean, we're on the road in the SEC country, and the crowd was into it. And Luke, it was, it was a heck of a game. But what were some of your takeaways from that game? Well, you know, another nail biter, and that's something OSU has been used to all year. But they were without two of their most impactful players in Javar Shine and Kendall Smith. We all know what Smith did during Bedlam, a couple clutch threes, a few clutch layups to here and there when the Cowboys needed it. And Shine, I would say, is the Cowboys' most prolific wing defender. He's long, he's strong, he's able to contain a lot of guys. So I think they really missed him down there. And, you know, we saw how close the game was. I think either of those two guys' presence might just swing the game in, in the Cowboys' favor. Yeah, playing without those guys, Brandon Averett had to play a career-high 36 minutes. He responded, though. He had, like, 10 points and four assists, but still, like, no Kendall Smith, and then we already know about the situation with Dawson him getting kicked off. So that was a tough loss for the Cowboys. That dropped to 0-5 in true road games. And so, I mean, Boynton is kind of relieved, I guess, a little bit to get back at home, kind of get back to the winning ways, get back to playing in the conference. So it should be interesting tonight. Yeah, and they had a tough stretch right there, going to Tech and then going to Arkansas. And even though the Cowboys and five other Big 12 teams lost in that Big 12 SEC Challenge, they went 4-6 and six during that. I don't think it changes the fact that the Big 12 is at the top of conference standings. Every year in every college sport, the question's the same. What conference is best? But in college basketball, I feel like the question should be, what conference is the deepest? And it's the Big 12 this year, and here's why. Seven teams are in the top 50 in the Ken Palm rankings and in the top 50 in strength of schedule. For the Big 12, that's 70% of the conference compared to the 50 to 60% range that the SEC and Big 10 see. To go along with the treacherous Big 12 slate, the Big 12 played 16 ranked opponents in its non-conference schedule this year. Normally that doesn't bring the tough schedule that they have, but the Big 12 features some of the best teams in the country this year. Throughout the season, the conference has seen up to eight teams featured in the March Madness predictions, and they find have some of the top players in the country, many on the preseason award watch list. Players like Trey Young, Devontae Graham, and Mo Bamba and others are leading teams that are fluctuating in and out of the top 25. Right now the Big 12 has four teams in the top 25, but it's tough because in the Big 12, every team plays each other twice, whereas other conferences like the ACC, you might only play each other once. So it's really hard for that Big 12 team like TCU, who had to play a stretch of Kansas and OU very close together. They were high in the rankings, then they lost those games and they just kind of fell out. Uh, it's the friction of playing against those teams multiple times that, you know, it motivates some players to, like Mitchell Solomon to be better because they're either going to redeem themselves or they're going to fail. So that's why he's my player choice for climbing up the boards.
Mitchell Solomon, a name that only recently rings a bell. He has always been under the basket. As a freshman, Solomon was the first post player off the bench. Standing at six foot nine and 260 pounds, Solomon is large enough to make a presence on the defense and quick enough to guard in the perimeter. But for a while, Solomon was flying under the radar. Until now. Mitchell Solomon finishes. Solomon the rebound. Solomon is making headlines and moving up in the ranks in the Big 12. And he is the eighth player to accompany an exclusive group of Cowboys, the Oklahoma State 500 150 Club. To join a Cowboy needs 500 rebounds, 100 blocks, and a career field goal percentage of 50 or better. Solomon is new to the spotlight because his character is more about being a teammate and having his work ethic do the talking. And that is why Boyan is referring to Solomon as the team's most valuable player for his leadership, rebounding, hustle, and his unselfish acts on the court. Boynton was right. That's his MVP. Mitchell Solomon making all the right plays. These speak volumes of what kind of athlete Solomon is. And given everything he has so his team could have a chance to win so his team could have a chance to win. That's what he's about, and I love him for it. Even though Solomon is graduating this year, his legacy will continue. He gives me a chance when I go out and recruit to show people what this program is about, what it always has been about, and what it will continue to be about. When we come back, we'll look at the contributions from big man Yankuba Sima, and Richard breaks down how to stop TCU's high pace scoring attack. You're watching Osei TV's Countdown to Tip Off. Oh, dang it. Siri, guitar lessons. Hmm, daddy -os. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I was hoping to hear more about your music lessons. Sure, 70 bucks a month. It's 30 minute private lesson once a week. What are you wanting to learn? The guitar. Uh, let's find me a teacher. Sounds good. Jumping little juke joint. Let us be your Joe's forever. <laughs> Welcome to Old State TV's Countdown to Tip Off. We just got done talking about Solomon, how he's making great strides and improving. Now let's talk about another post player who's making a great impact. Nude, fresh face OSU, Yakuba Sima. He transferred from St. John's during last season, and according to NCAA rules, a player needs to sit out a full calendar year before playing with a new team. He made his debut mid-December and has been an immediate contributor. Even though these clips are mainly offensive plays, he's actually a bigger impact on defense, but it often goes unnoticed by the cameras. Sima had three blocks in three of the last four games. The last player to do this was Michael Coppins in 2013. But get this, the last player to get three blocks in four games straight was Brian Houston in 1990. Seema is getting started. So I can see him being referred to as swatting Seema pretty soon. 
This is def uh, definitely a defensive driven player and also an averaging 5.4 rebounds in his last five outings. So expect him to continue to make an impact, especially in the paint. Now, Richard, I know you've been looking and, um, you know, the Horn Frogs, how are they doing their game plan? Well, you know, normally I break down our offense on how to beat them, and you do a, I do a film session of breaking down the offense, but I decided to take a different, more exciting approach. Let's take a closer look. The Horn Frogs enter tonight's matchup with the Cowboys as the number six ranked scoring offense in the country. Their success can be attributed to their ability to run in transition and share the ball. Their ability to find the extra man has them ranked as the second best in the country at 19.9 assists per game. To counteract that, the Cowboys will have to frolic with the Frogs, as in get out on the break and also run an up-tempo offense. The formula worked well for Texas, a team who defeated TCU early in the year and a team who OSU found success running the break on in a win. The Cowboys have a potent offense of their own when they can move up-tempo and get the ball in the hoop 10 seconds into the shot clock. All of their conference wins have come at home and in late game drama, but the Cowboys have found a way to pull it out partially by utilizing this strategy. This will be the 10th game in Gallagher Ivor Arena for Boyton in his two in his two years, one as assistant coach, now as a head coach. So Nicholas Ramsey takes a look at Boyton's success with the Cowboys against Texas teams at home. Mike Boynton is coaching his ninth home game against a Texas school in his two-year tenure at OSU. These seven schools traveled to Stillwater looking to beat the Cowboys, but they haven't had much success. Texas A&M Corpus Christi was Boynton's first home game against a Texas team in GIA, and the Islanders had a long three-and-a-half-hour flight home after losing 92-70. to TCU and Texas were sent packing as both lost by 13 last season in Stillwater. Texas Tech also made the sad trip down I-44 after losing 80-63. Baylor celebrated in Stillwater after beating the Cowboys 72-69, giving Boynton his first loss against the Texas team at home while he, Boynton has been on the OSU sideline. Since then, Boynton and the Pokes haven't lost to a Texas team at home. Houston Baptist and UT Rio Grande Valley wished they didn't make the trip to Stillwater, and Texas this season lost 65-64 to in one of the most exciting OSU home games thus far. Total, the Cowboys have outscored Texas teams 682-573 to in Gallagher-Iber Arena and are 7-1 and in Mike Boynton's tenure on the OSU sideline. With all the excitement and entertainment that happens with OSU each year, it's pretty easy to forget how OSU players' careers go after they're not wearing orange and black. So I took a look at four players who are in the NBA, two of which have already asserted themselves, and the other two are still trying to make their way in the big leagues. Not every player who comes through Gallagher Iba Arena makes it to the next level, but let's catch up with a quartet of Cowboys in the NBA right now. Marcus Smart has accepted a significant role in Beantown, averaging at least 30 minutes per game for the second straight season. His numbers aren't flashy. He averages a shade over 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. But these highlights are from a 21-point outburst last week against the Lakers. Smart will take it. Make it. Smart is even better at making his presence felt defensively. He weaseled into James Harden's head on December 28th, causing the superstar to commit two offensive fouls in the final 7.3 seconds, leading to a Celtics win. Isn't this the passion? However, he got a little too defensive when he reportedly hit a photo frame, injuring his right hand and sidelining himself for two weeks. The incident happened prior to the Celtics' loss to the Clippers last Wednesday. Speaking of the Clippers, rookie Jawan Evans has seen an unexpected leap in playing time after Doc Rivers' squad suffered a bunch of injuries. His shooting has been far from ideal. He's only shooting 34% from the field, but still, Evans is getting quality minutes and low-pressure situations early in his career which will help his development immensely. Tony Allen, now in his 14th season, is nearing the end of his career. 
He's averaging a career-low 12.4 minutes per game for the Pelicans this season and hasn't played since fracturing his fibula on December 10th. He won't be making headlines anytime soon, but he's one of the most feared perimeter defenders of this generation. Once a high flyer in GIA, Markel Brown has yet to spread his wings in the NBA. Brown has spent most of his time this season in the NBA G League, a developmental stage for players to improve. Brown has averaged just under 17 points per game for the Rio Grande Valley Vipers and could be called up to the NBA if injuries plague the Rockets. Yeah, Luke, I think it's awesome how Juwan Evans in just one year has played such a big role in L.A. Yeah, and you got to wonder, maybe has Marcus Smart talked to Tony Allen about some defensive tips? I know they're both, you know, tenacious defenders on the outside, pretty feared perimeter guys, so I wonder if those, you know, two former posts have, you know, exchanged tips over the years. Yeah, for sure. Well, when we come back, Austin Pohl will join me. We'll talk about the Cowgirl basketball team and their recent success. You're watching O-State TV's Countdown to Tip-Off. Garden Party Florist offers a wide range of services, including handmade flower arrangements and floral accessories to help make your special day perfect. The flowers of your choice are intricately arranged and hand-delivered to your wedding or event to ensure the perfection that we promise. Each bouquet and boutonniere is made specific to your liking, allowing each one to be as different or alike as you prefer. Garden Party also offers interior design services to help create the picture-perfect day. We pride ourselves on the details that go into making your big day as special as it can be. And finally, our floral decor puts the finishing touches on your wedding or event. At Garden Party, we aren't just arranging flowers, we're arranging memories. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the Lost Creek Safari. Oklahoma's most affordable walk-through exotic animal park. That lazy kangaroo thinks he runs the place. They're recording now. Lost Creek is home to over 20 different kinds of critters. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Get my good side. Get, get my good side. Reserve a tour for your party or event. And come hang out with some party animals like us. Hey. I'm Gilbert. Phew. Mission is by reservation only. And it's $5 per human. Do you think it's a good time to record me? I'm trying to eat here. Bye. Hey, ladies. Big strut coming up right here. Ready? <laughs> hey, we're located at 1200 West 80th Street off Highway 177. So y'all come out and get lost at the Lost Creek Safari. Welcome back to Countdown to Tip Off here on O State TV. I'm joined with Austin Pohl. And Austin, we've been talking about men's basketball here for a while, but the women's basketball team is doing just as good, if not better. So, what have you seen so far this season? For sure, the Cowgirls are ranked 23rd in the nation thanks to a veteran and a couple of newcomers. Kaylee Jensen is one of four seniors on Jim Little's team. She is ranked 22nd in the nation in rebounding and 10.4 per game and is tied for 9th in double-doubles with 12. Her ability to dominate in the low post is what makes her most effective. She has picked up her game in conference play. Jensen is averaging 21.8 points per game and 12.3 rebounds per game while shooting 55% from the field. Her dominance was on full display when she led the Cowgirls to a bedlam win in Norman. She was a go-to scorer down the stretch, scoring 12 of the last 15 Cowgirl points. Jensen ended the game with a season-high 29 points and grabbed 13 boards. She's making a strong case to be named to the All-Big 12 team for the second year in a row. For most players, it is difficult making the jump from high school to college, but for Braxton Miller, that is not the case. She has been a great addition to the team and has helped the Cowgirls' backcourt become one of the best in the Big 12. Miller has started 17 out of 20 games this season, and in those 20 games, she is shooting 39% from deep and has made a three in all but three games this season. Her great shooting has aided to her scoring in double figures in 10 of the last 12 games. In conference play, Miller is averaging 14 points per game, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists. She has a great chance of making the Big 12 All-Freshman team. Lauren Godin has no doubt been the best player for the Cowgirls this season. LSU was a fourth team Godwin has played for. She started at UNT, went to Butler, to UT San Antonio, and has now made home at Oklahoma State University. At OSU, Goodwin is averaging a career best in points, assists, steals, turnovers, and field goal percentage. 
Goodwin is a quick player with fantastic ball handling skills that helps her get to the basket with ease. Although she's only 5'9", Goodwin is great at finishing in traffic and getting and one opportunities. To go along with her strong ability to finish inside, she's a great passer and jump shooter. She is 17th in the NCAA in scoring at 21.4 points per game and dishes out 5.2 assists per game. She is unfazed when a defender is all over her. Her composure and leadership is what makes her so valuable to this team. Goodwin does it on both ends of the floor. She is one of the best perim perimeter defenders in the country. She averages 3.9 steals per game, which ranks sixth in the NCAA. Goodwin has been Big 12 Player of the Week twice. She is definitely in the conversation for Big 12 Newcomer of the Year and Big 12 Player of the Year. The Cowgirls are 15 and five overall, 12 and one at home, and six and three in Big 12 play. They rank in the top 20 in the nation in scoring, scoring margin, and turnover margin, and rank in the top 10 in turnovers per game and free throws made. They also scored 21 and a half points off turnovers per game. OSC was a much improved team from last year. They are just two wins shy for matching the win total from a season ago. According to ESPN, OSU is projected to be a seven or eight seed in the tournament. That is great when you consider they weren't even projected to be in the tournament in the preseason. The Cowgirls are catching eyes across the nation. The Cowgirls will face a tough test tomorrow night in Waco. They travel to, they travel to Waco, Texas to take on number three, Baylor. Tip-off is at 6.30. Baylor has won the last three, me the last three meetings by 20 plus points. Baylor is 19-1 and rakes in the top five in scoring, field goal percentage, scoring defense, opponent field goal percentage, rebounds, assists, and blocks. They are no doubt one of the best teams in the nation, and they have a great chance of winning it all. The odds may not be in the Cowgirls' favor, but a win over Baylor will surely, will surely boost their chance of getting higher seed in the tournament. Yeah, for sure. And we've been talking about how the guys need to really work hard to try to make that last push, but the girls are right there. I mean, they're ranked, and if they can stay in those rankings, then I think they have a great shot of getting in the tournament. Absolutely. They have a great team this year, and, there's, and anything can happen in the Big 12. Well, when we come back, we'll wrap things up, look at Boynton's first year, and much more, right here on O-State TV. Oh, dang it. Siri, guitar lessons. Hmm, daddios. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I was hoping to hear more about your music lessons. Sure. 70 bucks a month. It's a 30-minute private lesson once a week. What do you want to learn? The guitar. Uh, that's fine. You're a teacher. Sounds good. Yeah. Welcome to Gypsy Snark. May I help you find anything? No thanks, I think we'll just see what pops out at us. A snark is a mysterious creature, not devious, but kind. Seldom heard, but never seen. He'll show you what you need to find. Did you have trouble finding anything? Everything just kind of popped out at us. Welcome to Old State TV's Countdown to Tip Off. Before we continue, I'd like to give a special thanks to OSU Dining for allowing us to use this fine venue. We're here live at the North Dining Hall. Also, some of the commercials you've been seeing have been courtesy of Shane Hoffman's Fundamentals of Audio and Video Productions, some of our best and brightest SMSC students. So special thanks to all of those and the companies for now allowing us to use their stuff for free advertising. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's the midpoint of the season and fans are either looking ahead to the tournament or looking to next season. So Nick Ramsey compares how Boynton has done in his first season versus others. 
Mike Boynton is 13-8 and eight through his first 21 games this season, and the Cowboys have surprised some teams. But how have previous OSU coaches performed in their first year? Travis Ford was 14-7 and seven after his first 21 games and finished the season 23-12 and 12 with a loss in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Brad Underwood was 13-8 and eight in this time last season and finished 20-13 and 13 with a first-round loss in the Big Dance. But Mike Boynton isn't the only first-year coach this season. Patrick Ewing took over his alma mater Georgetown and sits at 13-8, and eight, but only 3-7 and seven in the Big East Conference. Archie Miller, who is in his first year in Indiana, is 12-10 and 5-5 and five and five in conference play. Boynton is on pace with other first-year coaches this season, and he's doing so with this graduate transfer as his only new player. Now, Mike Boynton didn't necessarily get a head start or an easy start even as he began his career as head coach of the Cowboys. Early on, there was an FBI scandal that kind of tainted the image of the program. Jeff Carroll had to come off the bench his first six games of the season, and, you know, he lost a few of his best players in Jawan Evans and Phil Forte along with having to kick off uh, Devon Dillard and Zach Dawkins off the squad. So we'll take a look at what Boynton has, has had to replace as those three players had left. The, uh, those three players combined for 38.2 points, 7.3 boards, and about eight assists per game. So what did he do to replace those? Well, someone's got to step up and fill those minutes. So that's where Brandon Averett, Kendall Smith, and Travaris Shine comes in. He's returning from an injury. He was gone all of last season. Now you look at the production there, that's pretty similar with just the disparity in points there, but let's keep in mind these players have played fewer minutes than the previous three players. So the cliche goes, you gotta play with the cards you're dealt, and that's exactly what Boynton's done. You know, they have a 13-8 and record so far, they have an upset win against number four OU, and I think that's you know more than most OSU fans expected coming into this year. Yeah, for sure, and they're gonna have to keep on playing with what they have. That trio is gonna have to step up if the Cowboys really wanna make a push toward the postseason. But they've done so, they've done They've helped themselves so far with a couple key wins. They beat number 19 Florida State on a neutral court, 71-70. Uh, to 70. And then just recently, they beat OU here in Stillwater. OU was ranked number four at the time. They beat them in overtime, 83-81. But just those two wins are not going to help them get in the tournament. They have some big ones coming up. They have tonight's game against TCU, and then they still have to travel to TCU. They also have four games left against currently ranked teams, two of them being on the road. And then they have two more games on the road against Texas and Iowa State. And we're talking about how they've kind of struggled on the road. They're going to need to pick it up if they want to make the tournament. Yeah, believe it or not, Brian, there actually still is a path to actually qualifying for the NCAA tournament. I know, like, on our first show earlier that we said, well, OSU is projected to be number 10 and they probably won't make the tournament. But like as y'all was talking about earlier, this is the best conference in basketball. So every night you know you're going to have to bring it. Taking a look at our remaining schedule, there still is a path. We still have to play Kansas twice, which we can get a game out of that. Now, I know last year Kansas swept us, but this isn't one of your typical Kansas tough teams. You still have Baylor at home. You still have Texas Tech at home. Those are two ranked teams. Well, Baylor's not ranked, but they're a highly competitive team. Um, they can, can beat Texas on the road. They were successful against Texas here. So it's still a chance for OSU to make the tournament. Now, yes, they do have to get better on the road. Boynton knows that, and he doesn't take any moral victories. But if OSU keeps playing hard, they're, they're this close. They're right on the cusp of getting it. So there's still a shot. So talking about the tournament, though, there's one player in particular that I think, you know, made a really big impact last year, especially, and that's the Von Dillard. Unfortunately, Devon was kicked off the team earlier this semester, um, beginning this year, because he violated team rules. And, you know, that's the biggest surprise to me because I feel like he's such a vital player. Like, if you looked at ESPN, um, Sports Center, you name it, he was on there. They were mentioning him. He was a big player. And for him to be making an impact, I mean, you know, pushing those buttons off the court enough to, like, get kicked off the team, I just think that's so big that the team is sacrificing having a strong player over having moral rights. 
Yeah, you look at Devon Dillard, he was a modern day human highlight film. I mean, this guy, like you said, you could always expect to see him on Sports Center top 10 plays. He's a guy who I thought was going to be big for the team. I mean, you look at last year, how he made his strides under Underwood. You know, with the new coach, he would get a little bit more freedom under Boynton. He stayed here. He could have followed Underwood to Illinois. In fact, there was some rumor he was going to go to Illinois, but he stayed here. And so I was shocked by how he was couldn't get it together and he got kicked off. But like Boynton said, you just got to kind of work with what you have. He's never had his team whole, but hey, guys have stepped up and they've contributed. So no excuses there. Yeah, it's definitely shown. You talk about surprising players. I know Oklahoma State fans aren't going to want to hear this, but if I had to pick a player of the year right now, it would have to be Trey Young. The dude is scoring the basketball at an unbelievable clip, Team almost three. 30 points per game, almost 10 assists per game, Patterson, leading the so country in both categories. Hey, coach, and just the things that this guy does in the court this is unbelievable. He's got unlimited range. He can get to the cup. And I know people will point out, yeah, he had all the turnovers. He took 39 shots against OSU. But if you want to talk about efficiency, the next game, he scored 29 points on 7 of 9 shooting. And that's just a feat that not many players in this league can accomplish. I know coming into this season, maybe Marvin Bagley was the consensus pick. Maybe DeAndre Ayton from Arizona as a little dark horse. But right now, i got to stick with Trey Young, and he's not slowing up anytime soon. And I have to agree with you. I think Trey Young is the front runner for player of the year. And he won't necessarily be the first one drafted. It'll depend on who is picking at that number one pick come the NBA draft. But I think he is the best college player right now. I know Bagley and Aiton might fit other teams' needs, but Trey Young is, is killing it out there. Well, ladies and gents, as we look to wrap things up, you remember we are about 20 minutes away from tip-off. You can watch the game tonight on ESPNU. If you do not have immediate access to a television, there is the ESPN app. You can watch it on all your mobile devices, tablet, smartphone, laptop. Also, if you're not access to that, you can listen to, on the radio to our own Dave Hunziker, the voice of the Cowboys on the Cowboy Radio Network. So it should be a good game tonight. OSU back on at home. Look to get another conference win. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. I think it'll be a good game. The Cowboys come out with some intensity like they did against OU. Get up big. Don't let TCU kind of work this way back. Keep that lead. I think it'll be huge. Well, for everyone here at Countdown to Tip Off, for Luke Garza, I'm Brian Schroll. And for Natalie Sutton, I'm Richard Denson. Thanks for watching. Thank you.